Jamie? Uh, we are both directors at LG and Dupont Clark. Uh, a poster public of LARP. Um, so to preface this, we're going to be talking a lot of points on um, generalizing LARP, but a lot of the examples we're going to give are from the LARP that we run just because it's the one we have the most stat experience with. Uh, we're both... Uh, I've been LARPing for uh, over 15 years. Is there a Yeah, you have oh, been okay. LARPing for about 17. That's disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> but it's awesome! You will look forward to being able to say that you have also been larping for more than a decade. You'll also be able to. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, in this talk, we're going to talk about uh, developing characters, what you should bring to your first event, what to expect at an event, and uh, things like that. Uh, how many of you have role played before? It's like, ah, you don't count. This is one of our players, okay. Amber. Hi. Um, how many of you have learned? Much less. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Should I? Yeah. Uh, friends and I used to grab sticks and. Uh, well. Not so different you're from gonna, what we do. You're gonna bring me to my first point here, huh? <laughs> um, <laughs> which is um, when you're doing things like that, when you're young, playing pirates and knights, or even My Little Pony, you are LARPing. Uh, this is an old, old D&D 2.0 joke, if you get it, it's not zero. Um, <laughs> so, um, it, it, I mean, LARPing is something that we kind of naturally do. We, we often will take on another character and, and act out scenes or act out, you know, scenarios, which is basically what we're doing at LARP. It's playing pretend for grown-ups. Um, the only thing LARP does is encases it in like some rules and infrastructure so that we all feel like it's grown up and, and not fair. just not just you know playing pretend. Uh, but that's basically all you're doing. It's playing pretend, uh, and playing pretend is incredibly good for you. Um, and uh, there's no reason to stop. So um, technically, role playing. Uh, so LARPing is live action role playing. Um, it's the process of taking on a new character's personality and acting out that character in response to situations and stimuli that you're going to encounter at a game. Uh, basically, you get to improv for a certain amount of time. Uh, for example, um, if any of you have been down to the terrace, you've heard me shouting obnoxiously at people. Uh, ordinarily, in my everyday life, I'm Jamie, I'm the director of Elegy. Yeah, sort of please, like slip into southern accents, it's kind of... Get stuck, but when I'm a character in LARP, I'm playing lavish, bittersweet, uh, head roused for the Carnival Alleys, uh, and uh, head security for Barter Town, uh, and uh, sort of aggravating, obnoxious Southern Belle. Uh, I'm playing a character called Cincinnati Sopshu, who looks a little different in game because she's got a beard. Um, but, uh, it's too hot. <laughs> it's way too hot for that. So yeah, um, at any point, you're going to have a certain amount of characters living inside your head intuitively. Um, and LARPing allows you to bring down those characters and play them in a safe setting. Um, so, which brings us to the question of why do we LARP? Um, I know we've all got different reasons, but um, it's for any number of reasons. Um, it's a means of escapism from reality. Um, a chance to put on the skin out of another. So there are a lot of situations that we can't act out in real life because they are unsafe or they are against the law or they are... Uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. You're going to only deal with a lot of kind of um, situations that will pull you out from yourself that in real life you'd be like, no! But, you know, this will give you a chance to really delve into that and it's, it's almost cathartic in that way. It's exactly cathartic. Yeah, so you get to, to experience these emotions, you get to experience these situations that, that you know, may be harmful to you in real life, but in this way, you get to do them in a safe space. The, the great joy of the emotional experience of LARPing is being able to take something that you are afraid of or something that makes you angry, actually hold it out and interact with it, but at a safe distance. Um, you know, you can freak out. And be, a, a great quote I have from a friend of mine um, who played in a LARP or who played this sort of Viking, and this guy was just the biggest, nicest, like, cuddliest Wookiee in the world in real life. But he said what he loved about going to LARP and playing this Viking is it's just such a chance to be fucking unreasonable. Um, because, you know, people will come up to me and be like, okay, we've got to do this thing. And he'll be like, no! That's dishonorable. I won't have it. Or, hey, like, I want to show you this cool thing. I can, it's black magic. 
Be gone! Wait. And he could just, you know, spit on people for being different than him, which is something that we don't do in real life. But it's fun to be able to play with that at LARP and afterwards be able to be like, hey, I'm sorry for making fun of you for what you believe in. <laughs> like I just did there, it's all for pretend we're cool, right? Yeah, now, okay, cool. that is one thing we'll point out at the end of every game. If you've had those kind of interactions with people, we encourage you to go up to the person you've had that kind of interaction with and just talk to them about it. Like, listen, that was amazing. Thank you so much, you know. They said, this is me right now. I'm a nice person. I'm someone you want to hang out with. In character, maybe not, but you know, like, you need to have the, de the separation between character and person because we've got a lot of people in game that I would not want to talk to at all. Boyfriend. Amber's character being one of them. <laughs> uh, but but I mean, but I love Amber, but her character is maybe. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it, it kind of gives you the, the experience of, of acting as that kind of personality. That, that you're not at all. I mean, um, before I started working, I was extremely shy and, and doing things like this would terrify me. And like, I just would shy away from it like crazy. But it kind of gives you that experience and um, develops your personality. You'll be able to, to develop these kind of um, public speaking skills. skills so which, you know, some people just like to be able to do that. Uh, some people just want to hit shit. <laughs> That's okay too. Yeah, do that. Yeah, we've got uh, tons of weapons if you guys want to try them out at all. They're all up there. We've got some guns and some uh, melee weapons. Uh, you can go at one of our fighters or each other. Um, and every it's single fun. one of those reasons is valid. I'm a big drama nerd, so I'm going to keep on going on with sort of the emotional experience of LARPing and how you, know, you get to inhabit this character. It's cool. Um, and that's, I'm really into that. A lot of people come to the game because they like sort of like the game of it. They like, you know, the interactions of the numbers and the you sports know, of hitting each other and so on. And that, that is totally that is totally something you can get out of LARP too. Uh, you just do it in such a way that you're not, you know, diminishing the experience for other people. Um, and that's something we're probably gonna keep coming back to your day. LARP is ultimately a collaborative experience. Um, you know, we're both directors of the game, but that's kind of a kind of a misnomer because we don't direct anything. The players, if you you know, play a LARP, you have as much agency as anyone on the organizer side. Yeah, you are developing the world the exact same amount as the people writing the world. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, and this is slowly turning off on me. There we go. So. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, so, um, the technical that you can have a LARP that you're not, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> um, that you're not going to get um, is death, like experiencing your own death. Because you can die at these things and go through the whole motions of that. Where you guys are really, you know, you don't really want to do that in your life. You're going to get um, loss, um, the rise and fall of power. We've got a lot of uh, players in the game right now kind of doing that kind of thing, whether amassing followers and, and getting money and you know, eventually they'll fall. Um, starting anew, uh, being a villain, and um, bravery under exceptional odds is another one that we're experiencing a lot of game, and the players are, are really enjoying. Um, so yeah. Uh, that's my intro. Um, so, no, go. No. <laughs> Um, so you can, you can clap after everything I say. I love it. <laughs> Please, yeah, Jimmy, you did it. No, don't see this. You stop it. No, don't stop. Go on. Um, okay, so we kind of want to get into exactly how LARP works because there is a lot of mechanical things you can get into with LARP, like rules. Um, we're going to do a quick overview of the different styles. Uh, yes, I'm just. Really oh. We're going to be talking about the rules of the game that we run, just because it's easier for us, it's the ones we're most familiar with. Every game is going to have different rules, so the most important thing is to do if you're looking at a certain game is to look into the rule set. Um, LG is unique because we have a very small rule set, uh, where, well, it's we like, we like to tell people we're unique. Really, it's the smallest one I know, um, because we are more interested in the Role play immersion part of it, then the common damage and having to do math in your head, kind of. So that. something that I mean, a lot of a lot of LARPs show their heritage as having come from tabletop role playing games, um, which is 
how a lot of LARP is sort of understood to have started. So people were doing their tabletop role-playing games like Dungeons and Dragons and so on, like I think many of you have done, and have gone, let's put on costumes and doing this standing up. Um, and then they sort of adapted their tabletop rules to do it live. So a lot of LARPs you will see rules that clearly have their, you know, their, their, their birth in tabletop rules. Um, and when you're doing something tabletop, um, there's a lot of opportunity to pause. God is basically sitting at a table with you. So, you know, things can keep rolling. Um, you know, elaborate rules don't affect the experience the way they do with LARPing. LARPing, you need to adapt the rules a little bit um, to maintain that immersive experience. You know, we're generally of the opinion that LARP rules should be as um, sort of invisible as possible um, so that you're not distracted from the actual sort of experience of being in whatever setting you're in, be it fantasy or, um, uh, you know, post apocalyptic as we are. Um, LARPs for years have been trying to figure out, you know, better and better ways to make their rules less and less obtrusive. We have done it the best ever because we're geniuses. Because um, and, I'm telling you all this right now. But um, this is a this is a continuing process. There's some LARPs that have even more minimal rules than we do. That's very we're crazy about LARP over in Europe. We're mostly going to be talking about North American LARP because things just get nuts really high as soon as you go across the pond. Um, but yeah, LARP rules kind of exist on a spectrum from the really kind of like crunchy, detailed with graphs and charts and so on. Um, which isn't so much my thing, but is a thing, to, you know, sort of over here, you know, the very free form, just, just do what you feel, bro. Um, and we're, our game is sort of somewhere at this end of the spectrum. Yeah. Um, so, LG is a Bopper LARP, and the reason it's called that is because we use weapons called Boppers. Uh, this is a Bopper weapon. It's, it's, we will call this a latex weapon, but a Bopper weapon is basically um, a weapon that's got a hard core, but it's covered in foam and decorated on top of that just because it's safe then. Are we talking about the weapons now? Uh, no, I'm just saying what Because I bought floppers. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, okay, so no. this is like, so... You no, know, we, we have a section of floppers. We're oh. talking about floppers. Um, what we're going to talk about is... Was, I told him that I'm leaving this and he's having a really hard time just listening to me talk. <laughs> um, Okay, so there are basically three categories of players that you're going to find in a Bopper Lark. Um, the PCs, which are the player characters. They're going to be people like you if you come to the game. They're the ones that um, are going to be interacting with the plot, interacting with each other. They're, they're, they're going to make up about 80% of the game. Um, then there are NPCs, which, NPCs, which are non-player characters. They're the ones that the people that are running the game are going to send out to interact with you either through role play or through combat or any you know, number of various situations. The, the player characters are basically the main characters, the primary characters, yeah, if, you think of, about it, if you think of it as a story. Like a movie. The NPCs come in as all the sort of secondary and tertiary characters to um, inject drama and peril into the setting. Ideally, there should be enough sort of interaction and drama between the main characters. The jobs of the N NPCs is basically to just, you know, shoot that eight ball and keep things moving. Um, but again, some LARPs, you know, depend more on uh, injection from plot. It's typically, like, typically any sort of, like, scenarios devised by the organizers of the game is called plot. Um, whereas others are very much just organized around the players bouncing off each other. Uh, this is one of our players in the game. Um. <laughs> love it if you saw this. Um, so this is uh, a, a shot of Bopper combat that we end up doing a lot of during the weekend. Um, this is uh, some of our NPCs. So these are the kind of roles that we're going to set out in the shape shift. Like they could be combat or they could be peace loving Hindus. Um, yeah, NPCs push, push plot forward and give players someone to interact with. And then we have the third category, which is the directors or storytellers, STs. Uh, that is the people that are pushing story out. They're giving NPC roles to go and interact with people. They're generally adapting to the things the players are doing because they can write miles of story to be able to, you know, to interact with as soon as it hits the PCs. It's out the window. We have no idea what to do. There's no script. Like we were saying, it's a collaborative storytelling thing, and the joy of LARP is that it's reactive and interactive. So, as STs, we do some planning, because we 
need to, but as often as not, you know, we'll send it a scenario and be like, okay, go do this and, you know, see how they figure this out. And then the enemies come back, well, the players, you know, responded to it this way, and now they're, you know, doing something different. And so you rip up the page and go, like, okay, well, we gotta, they're going, it's like, you know, it's like you say, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send Gandalf in with the ring, he's gonna give it to Frodo, and he's gonna go on this quest. And then comes back and says, yeah, I gave the ring to Frodo, and he gave it to, you know, you know that chick that Sam was crushing on? He gave it to her. as like a wedding ring. He's stealing and, Sam's and girl, and now she's got it. And we're like, oh, we got this whole Mount Doom thing. Okay, 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 get, get this shit together for a wedding. Let's do this. Commercially, though our industrious players are trying to figure out more and more ways to do it themselves. 
Um, and it's basically just, it's beautiful. It's actually often what they use in, um, uh, as like a prop weapon in long shots of the movies. And you can go ahead and take a look at that if you want. Um, these belong in a museum. Um, these are kind of the old style of how people do things, though um, still popular and still a, a, a great way to get something in the game. This is, this is what the term boffer comes from. So this is like a foam and duct tape weapon. Um, you can actually... Yeah, it's trivia. The reason they got that name is because of the, the sound they make when you hit someone. <laughs> Um, it's basically buff. So this is actually, I mean, if you've seen buff weapons before, you might actually see them as like these big, like thick tubes. Um, it's because they used to have like a thrusting tip and so on on the top. Um, we've, the, the technique has continued to develop, so now you get things a little better. This machete looks kind of wrecked because it's been in my car, and along with all of our tents and so on. <laughs> but I mean, this is a great example. I actually really like this hammer because I feel like it looks quite identifiably like a hammer. Um, but it's not quite as fancy as that one there, but it gets the job done. But this is the kind of thing you would do if you wanted to make something at home. You're going to absolutely make something like this, and these are standard in most bottle arms you, you play here. And, you're to take and uh, well. along with, with say, normal weapon-y type things, we also have people that make stuff like this, which is a frying pan, because we do have people coming in as cooks. Um, so you can pretty much buffer any type of weapon as long as you talk to the person that's doing the safety of the game. Um, and yeah. Yeah, every game will have its own safety requirements, kind of like what, well, typically when you show up with a homemade weapon, or even one you've bought, um, they'll just test it to make sure that the game that it conforms to whatever that game's safety requirements are. Um, um, every we, we also use Nerf guns, modded by Nerf guns, yeah. uh, as, as, as for firearms. Um, and uh, yeah, so at our game, we, like, we use Nerf guns, we paint them up so they look cool. Um, many games, like many games that also use guns, we don't do this, but you'll see people that, you know, you'll hold the gun and you'll throw little birdseed packets. Um, those are often used in like spell packets at, um, at like a fantasy art or so on, um, you know, to represent magic again. That's not something we do, um, but if you've ever seen video of LARPing, if you've ever seen that lightning bolt, lightning bolt, lightning bolt video, uh, <laughs> that's, what that, that's what that guy is throwing. <laughs> Um, um, we, we try to avoid goofy situations like that just because it kind of takes you out of it. It kind of, kind of makes you more aware of the, oh, I'm being ridiculous right now. <laughs> this is sort of a LARP design question. Like we were, like I was saying earlier, you know, everyone's trying to figure out how to make LARP more immersive. Um, one of the things that we've done is, again, if you've ever seen videos of LARP, you've seen when they're fighting, people are shoving numbers at each other constantly. That's not something we do. Um, you don't shout numbers at people, or I mean, if you're interested in what our actual system is, you can check out our website or come talk to us at our booth later. But uh, you know that the the lightning bolt, lightning bolt, lightning bolt scenario is something that is still out there, um, but is something that a lot of LARPs are trying to exactly. get away from. Um, we certainly are. Um, notes on combat. So this is actually something that's really important in our game. Um, in the being respectful to your other players. Um, we are, are big on uh, personal space. So before you make any kind of uh, physical role play with anyone, if I'm going to go and touch him because we're having like this intense emotional moment, I'm going to ask him really quickly, you know, like, is it okay to touch you? Because yeah. some people are not comfortable with that. And um, it's really going to, to basically ruin moments of their game. This is a this is sort of a general sort of thing of LARPs. LARPs the, the, one of the big joys of LARPs is the immersiveness. Um, the idea is that you can come out and buff a LARP which runs for an entire weekend, um, you know, for 42 hours, where if you want, you can just maintain one character and you can just be in that experience the whole weekend and get really into it. Um, but we don't expect people are actually going to be able to do that. The expectation is, you know, if you're in the play area, you're going to be trying to do that as much as possible to improve the experience for everyone. But there's always going to be situations where you need to figure out something outside of your character, um, and most LARPs have a way of handling that. At our game, this basically just means a quick out-of-game question, like, wait, what does that thing you just, that rule you just did to me did? And someone will explain to you, and that is always appropriate. It's always okay to just quickly check in with something with a question or something. That's fine. Um, sometimes, you know, this is something you'll often see at LARP. This basically means, I'm not here, ignore me, uh, which is for whatever reason, like maybe you're out of game, like you ran into Tim Hortons to get something to eat, and now you're back, and need to get to your tent to get back in the costume, just do this, which means like, I'm not here, just yeah, the wind, just the wind, just the wind. Um, and so that's, that's a thing. Um, but like, this is particularly useful because 
particularly at Elegy, we try and say, like, no, like, you know, play with those intense emotions. Go ahead and get that experience. You know, the tears and the fears uh, is what we say. You know, it's always appropriate. Like, if you really, you know, get in someone's face, it's like, Cincinnati, I know you're a damn fucking dirty thought bender and you've done been in my mind and done shit to me. You know, like, How dare you say that kind of thing to me? How dare you get that close to me? And, like, are we okay? Okay, cool. Like, I'm gonna fucking kill you! Oh, I'm gonna kill you! Keep going. Um, you know, you'd also use this, like, if so you think someone's, like, for real hurt, you'd be like, are you for real hurt? And then you'd be like, be like yeah, I'm hurt. And you'd be like, okay, safety, and everyone would pause. And, um, you know, the immersiveness and the maintaining character is an important thing, but it is not so important as your personal comfort or safety. So it is always appropriate to be like, Oh, it's actually a little intense for me to get out of here. Or yeah, it is absolutely appropriate to set those boundaries for yourself. And when they push on those boundaries, say, "Hey, okay, listen, I need to take a step back." Yeah. And and they'll be like, "Okay, that's cool." Yeah. And like. LARP is kind of a fraud environment. It gets intense. It gets you know physical and and, and emotional. So that's why it's really important to have things like, "Hey, are, you know, are you okay with physical role play?" Yeah, cool. All right. You want to throw you around and do stuff or whatever. Um. Yeah. So um. That out of the way, we kind of want to talk about how to come up with a character because this is uh, something we often get asked by people that are, are doing this for the first time because it is a little bit daunting to have to to set out a character and come up with a backstory. Um, <laughs> science. <laughs> this is just a map of uh, various types of people, but um, so we will often tell people like, what kind of a person do you want to be? Uh, you can be someone like a caregiver, or a protector, uh, a teacher, a cur you can be a curmudgeon, though we do have to warn people about characters like that, just because um, it does kind of put up a block to other people talking to you. Um, so we want to, you to have a good experience, we want you to play the character you want to play, but we do want to warn you ahead of time, like, you know, if you are wanting to be a social person, you need to have those social characteristics. Okay. Um, uh, you can be someone like a prophet, someone like a leader, someone like a warrior. I think there's a ghost. <laughs> um, uh, so... Can I jump in? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, there's two aspects to making character. Three aspects. One is, you're going to have a character sheet, which will be as complicated as simple or as the rules of the LARP you're playing. If an analogy it's beautifully simple, it will take five minutes. It's so easy. Um, it's not quite that easy, but we like to say this. There's the setting. Um, you will have more fun if your character conforms to the setting. So typically a LARP will have some sort of setting information that describes the world. So that when you come into the setting, when you make a character, like if you're going to a Star Wars LARP, you would sort of read about, okay, this is the world, and there's like Tatooine, and there's this. So that you don't show up and be like, I'm Captain Picard! And it's like, ah, that, well, that, sort of, that kinda doesn't uh... kind of fit. <laughs> The, the advantage of conforming to a setting, a well-designed LARP setting, is that it should give your character immediately relationships with other people in the game. Um, just to use Elegy as an example real quick, we have six factions, um, which they're, you know, are meant to sort of conform to various kind of like post-apocalyptic tropes. The idea is that just by picking, I'm from one of these factions, when you walk into the game, you immediately have a relationship with the other people because you either know, oh, that's another person from you know my culture, so I know you know how that determines our relationship, or that person's from you know our rival culture, and that it should immediately give you drama. Yeah, something to just base off of. Like... Carly was talking earlier about sort of playing the curmudgeon. Often when people come out and play LARP. Um, they, there's three kind of general things that people will typically do. Um, a lot of people show up at LARP and maybe they don't even realize it. They basically play themselves, but in that LARP setting. So I'm, you know, Jamie, but with superpowers. I'm Jamie, but an elf. Or, you know, I'm Jamie, but a lascivious cowboy. Um, uh, and that's cool, that's fine. Um, a lot of people show up and try and play a character just like a favorite character from some media they like. Um, and then some people go, it's like, no, I want to play something sort of really different from myself and original. The, the caution that Carly was talking about is a lot of people show up, it's like, okay, I want to play a character I really love. You know who I love? Wolverine. <laughs> I want to come up and play like a badass, like loner, anti hero, like Wolverine. The reason that doesn't, the reason we caution people against something like that at LARP um, is because LARP is a social exercise. Um, Wolverine is a fucking asshole. If you, if you, like, encountered Wolverine at a party, like, sort of lurking in a corner, kind of, like, brooding at people, you would not talk to him. He would be alarming and weird, and, you know, if you came up and talked to him and be like, so, hey, what do you do? 
I'm the best there is at what I do, and what I do is pretty. I'm like, oh, cool. 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 Later. Um, because that's that's unsettling. In the comics, Wolverine is surrounded by people who are forced by plot to interact with him and discover that in the inside he has a heart of gold. Um, at LARP, that's not going to happen. People are just going to interact with people who are more engaging than you. So if you're comfortable being a wallflower and you know, kind of not like sort of having, you know, and kind of being on the outside of things, that's fine. There are absolutely some characters like that, and they just enjoy watching. Typically, you want to play a character. When you design a character, you want to have a character with reasons to interact with other people. Make a character that cares about things. Find a reason to care about what's going on or, or have an opinion on what's going on. To come back to my, you know, my example of Jofu, the Viking earlier, you know, someone comes in and they've got, oh, I got this new magic staff that does such and such, and he could decide, like, oh, I got a new staff, that's boring, like, whatever, everyone has a staff. But no, he decided, that is black fucking wizardry. I don't like that. And because he made a strong choice about something, story and plot came out of it. So a great, a great tip for new characters is don't play characters that are apathetic, don't play characters that are loners. Playing a character that is social and has a reason to care about things will get you involved in the game um, more quickly and more fully. Um, so when coming up with a character, we often will tell people to play games. Uh, like, oh, where should that happen? <coughs> Oh yeah, so this is a great thing to do on the drive up. Um, so you've got like costuming and so on, um, and having details that you can fill in about your character on the fly is a great way for like to just to add depth in the character. So like on the drive up, we'll do this thing like Lavish has got this hat. Well, I mean, in theory, every piece of costuming you have, especially at LARP, where costuming, everything about the costuming says something about the character, and kind of you know like a cartoon show, the character always seems to be wearing the same thing every time you see them. These things must be important to them in some way. So you know, you ask someone, "Hey, Lavish, where'd you get that hat?" Well, I'll tell you all about this hat, uh, and you make up a story. But well, I got, I got this hat. This is actually a gift to me. Uh, a friend of mine who was a caravanassy with me. We, you know, protecting the trails uh, outside Barter Town, and um, well, he 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 done, you know, took an arrow from Wilder right to the chest, and as he died, he he gave me his very best straw hat, which is somehow held together. Would be a quick example. And that's why. I love this hat. No, no. <laughs> what is this? 2013? No. Um, what else we got? Um, uh, um, a lot of the time people will fall into the special snowflake um, category in which they create... Um, don't feel that you have to make someone with a backstory so tragic or so dramatic. Like, it's really interesting to come in as a farmer because it's not your backstory that's going to create the fun for you. It's going to be the story that you're interacting with. You know, that the backstory colors you, but it doesn't provide you with the most entertainment. Something we often tell people for Elegy when you're coming up for your first game. So the backstory is something for a lot of games. They'll ask you, like, tell us about where your character came from. You know, submit like a little short story or something that tells them where they came from. It gives plot an opportunity to, like, sort of, you know, play with you and stuff. At Elegy, we actually ask for a we give people a questionnaire, um, just so that we don't have to dig through prose to try and figure out what you're actually interested in hearing about. Um, a lot of people will try and be like, I, okay, I, gotta, you know, I want to play a lot of character, I gotta, yeah, I gotta make sure he's cool or no one's gonna play with him, so it's like, I'm gonna play, I'm, I'm Wolverine the Jedi, but, but I came out of a Godzilla egg, and sort of whole elaborate sort of thing that's not necessary. We were talking earlier, we like, try and build something that makes sense into the setting. If you do that, that should give you reasons to interact with other people, and it should give you reasons to have um, lots of fun. Yeah. I, like I was saying, what we tell people at LG is, don't write a character history until you've played a game or two. I mean, coming with kind of a rough idea, but actually playing the game has a way of informing, Coloring. Like, like helping you discover things about the setting, or even about the character that you wouldn't consider. So you might come in and then like interact with Amber and be like, wow, this is really cool. And like, I'm, I think we got something with Amber. And so you might be like, hey, so I, I think you're bringing this character back in, but like, do you want to be like distant relations or something? Because I know that you just murdered your whole family in game. And, 
I was, you know, planning on, you know, I was thinking kind of this thing about I'm looking for the people who murdered my family. Do you want to kind of write you, like, can we, like, link up our backstories so that, you know, that's a thing? That's absolutely a thing you can do, and it's another great thing that immediately gives you connections to other people in game. Uh, or, or finding a group of uh, people that are already playing the game and contacting them and being, hey, listen, okay, so, you know, I'm a little nervous coming to my first game. Do you mind having some character ties? I guarantee you people would be happy to do it. There's a section right on the forum for finding connections yeah. of people so you can write yourself into their backstories. My favorite piece of advice for making a character for a LARP, or just a general kind of advice for playing a LARP in general, is make a character with flaws and lead with them. Weaknesses, and put that right out in front. Um, if your character is a coward, make that super obvious. If your character is dumb, lead with that. If your character has a temper, lead with that. Because the secret to LARPing, is, am I jumping the gun here? No, go now. The secret to LARPing is that it's most fun when you fail. Um, everyone has the story of, you know, they're going off to LARP and their mom says, Okay, honey, have a good week time this weekend, try to win your LARP. And, you know, people will often go like, God, mom, you can't win LARP. That's not what you do. We call it a game. But it's a collaborative story. The game is kind of like... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you get when you don't preview my notes. <laughs> <laughs> so leading with your flaws, as I was saying. Um, LARP is most interesting when you fail. Um, <coughs> if a character always succeeds, Nothing interesting happens. If Frodo gets that ring, whistles up an eagle, flies to Mount Doom, and drops it in, that would make a lot more sense. Um, but it would be boring as hell. Failing at LARP is an opportunity to build yourself back up, and is an opportunity for something interesting to happen to characters. Characters change when they fail, or maybe they don't, and that could also be an interesting thing. Again, Amber's character is a fantastic Excuse example who <laughs> never learns anything and continues this terrible path that is sending her to, you know, the dark future that she has in store for her. I'm not um, yet. Not yet. <laughs> it's um, yours. So, picking a flaw and leading with it is guaranteed to give you a lot of fun, um, especially because other characters appreciate it. One of my favorite characters I ever played was just an abject coward. And I played this character in a very like kind of like fighty LARP where it was like, okay, we're gonna go on the adventure now and kill some goblins and get some treasure. Are you gonna come with us? And I'd be like, no, <laughs> no, that sounds dangerous Awful. and painful. <laughs> I will absolutely not go with you. And you know, fights would happen. I'd freak out. People loved to play with me because I was cowardly. They got to feel brave. Um, and so, if you find what is sort of a flaw in your character and lead with it. It's going to be fantastic because it's going to be an opportunity for other people to show what are strengths in their character, and they will love you for it, and they will find reasons to hang around you. And if they are doing their job well and leading with their flaws, you will have the opportunity to show um, that, you know, though you may be a coward, you know, you really, when you get right down to it, have a kind heart, which he did not. I mean, he was just kind of wretched and miserable in all ways. But, um, or is it any one of the number of cowardly characters I've played? Um, uh, but yeah, that's a, that's a great suggestion for Lark, is um, leave it to your boss. I'm that one. Go on. What do you got? <laughs> uh, one of the, the tips that we can give people is, especially for games like post apocalyptic games, where uh, costuming is a little different than a fantasy game, uh, Value Village is your best friend. Uh, we have bought more just crap at Value Village than we can name. Um, um, because people are daunted when they come into these things. They think, oh, you know, look at these people. They've got these great costumes. And, uh, I can't do that. Well, these people didn't start out with these great costumes. They started out with something simple. And each game, they have built on top of that. Um, they are adding uh, accessories and armor. And, you know, it's, it's a process of building it up. Um, we do push good costuming at our event just because it helps with the immersion. Um, when someone is wearing a like hot bitch on their butts or something like that, that, that kind of you know it takes you out of it a little. Unless you're playing a good. That would fit. Put it on there and like. Unless it's appropriate. See, it might be appropriate. 
So this, this kind of touches into preparing for LARP. Um, if you come by the LNG booth and you say, so how much does it come out to come and play? We'll tell you, oh, it's your first game, $20. Your first game's only $20, when usually, you know, a game is $40 to play. And you'll say, great, oh, weekend of fun for $20. Uh, not so fast. <laughs> because if we're responsible, there are some other expenses that you should keep in mind the first time you come out to LARP. If you don't have, depending on where you are, um, at our game, you're probably going to need camping equipment. You may not. We do have some cabin space, but it's kind of reserved for folks that need to plug in or so on and so on. But at any LARP, you're going to have to consider, okay, where am, I, where am I staying? Do they have cabins or am I going to need a tent? You have to consider your food. Some LARPs will sell food on site. Some LARPs will have a meal plan that you can sign up for. Some LARPs are like, you've got to bring your own food or starve. So that's something to keep in mind. Costuming and kit um, is something to keep in mind. Um, you know, you're going to want some manner of costuming. You're probably going to want some equipment for your character. So that is an expense you need to consider. The post-apocalyptic setting has the advantage of you can go to the Value Village and make something that looks really great. Um, for example, my fantastic pants, which I made myself, and I'm sure you'll agree, these are the best pants you've ever seen. I made these with nothing but a pair of black jeans and some scissors. Um, other LARPs may have like more elaborate costume and requirements, there's usually a way to come in with something acceptable on the cheap, though. Like a lot of fantasy LARPs, which typically it can be trickier to try and come in with a costume, will have a guide or something that says, hey, here's how you can make a $40 costume to get you through your first game. Um, you can probably make a costume for our game by taking some clothes that you think look like they might work and backing your car over it. Um, or putting it in your dryer with some gravel. Um, or, I mean, don't do that, you'll destroy your drive, but that's, um, <laughs> that's an option. Often you can talk to friends, if you have friends who are already LARPing, long-time LARPers will build up a kit, like they'll have a whole, like, tickle truck, um, for everyone here from Ontario, and there's a dress up, of, um, like, costuming bits, and they'll be like, oh yeah, I can put a costume, you can have this from this character, this from this character, this from this, and from there, you're, you know, a uh, new person, and oh, I've got a spare sword you can use. Um, but, you know, most LARPs have a community surrounding them, even if you don't have a friend that's already playing a you all do, because you've been listening to me, so now we're all friends. Um, uh, they'll have a Facebook group or forum that you go to and be like, hey, I'm planning on coming out. Does anyone have any costume bits they can lend me? Does anyone have any like props they can lend me? Um, we rent, um, rent out. We have props and weapons and so on. Um, so that's an option as well. Um, any other? Well, uh, we're, we're kind of running out of time. Right, we want to leave time for questions. Um, so, is there anything else that you wanted to talk about? Sunday lotion, bug spray, water. Um, <laughs> Those are all very important things. Uh, you laugh, we're not joking. You, no, can, you no, can have an no, absolutely no, no, miserable no. event by having wet shoes and bug bites. Very quickly. Amber knows she I got know. a pair of shoes. I had many really a shoe lost. disaster. Yeah. Very quickly. I, I had an extra pair of pair Get of rubber boots. boots. Yeah. Get rubber um, boots that fit you really well. <laughs> Combat boots. Yes. Are awesome. <laughs> that um, I had to borrow a pair of her shoes for an event because my shoes fell apart. <laughs> they were two sizes too small for me. I was in tears Ooh. by the end of the event. Yeah. Oh. Very quickly, because I'm a big LARP, I love LARP as a hobby and as a genre. So just to, like sort of talk about some of the other options you get, just so that this is this is indeed LARP 101. Not <coughs> yeah, LG we're, 101. We're not just trying to tell you. Some of the, we'd love to see you in LG, but we've spoken broadly about boffer larps, where typically you go for a weekend and this goes for an entire weekend. That is not the only type of larping there is. The other um, one of the other big forms of larping that's very popular in North America, lots of options right here in Toronto, is called parlor larp. Parlor larp you go and typically do for about four or five hours indoors somewhere, um, and um, typically. Um, we call what we do um, boffer lark or demonstrative lark because if I decide Carly has pissed me off, I'm going to hit her, hit her. Um, and part of lark typically what we call narrative um, because what you do is like Carly has pissed me off, I'm going to hit her. Hold on, let me roll. I dramatically hit you, and there will be some sort of combat resolution mechanic, much like a tabletop game to determine how that goes. I mean, if you are interested in that kind of thing, um, I know that they do a lot of World of Darkness LARP here in Toronto. They do um, Mage, Vampire, Changeling, Werewolf. Um, there is an L5R game, so it is uh, Feudal Japan. <coughs> kind of um, Lord of the Rings with yeah. Samurai kind of feel. Yeah. So that, that is another type of LARP that often has less of a time 
investment right off the top, um, but again, has, has that fantastic advantage of you know, being in character, interacting with someone live. Um, you won't get to sweat bullets and hide from me in a reader costume in the woods somewhere, um, but that's actually more enjoyable to some people. That's yeah, kind of more what they're looking for. One of the selling points is that you do end up feeling just terrified because this thing is coming out you're <coughs> hiding in the dark in the forest, and oh my god, it's coming. Okay, it's past me, thank god. Oh god, it's not speed, then you're running, and it's, it's like there's a lot of that kind of. Scary shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can get scared. I mean, you don't have to, you can play it safe, but if you want that kind of experience, which I, I mean, I highly recommend, it's a lot of fun. Um, in my personal plot, last game, two people who I was with and interacting with ended up crying real tears. Yeah, game, like you get that emotional. An emotional investment in this. I know that I come in just as NPCs and cry buckets just because that was the moment and that was what you wanted to give the PC. You wanted them to have that experience of this like real emotion. There seems to be a masochistic streak in LARPers, because after every game, people come up to us in the directors and are like, I shat out my heart. I was so scared. <laughs> so hiding. Like, Thank you so much for that. Is I spent all of Saturday afternoon bawling. <laughs> bawling into someone's shoulder. Thank you so much. People really seem to dig that. Yeah. And the people around you will appreciate that. Oh, like yeah. one of the one of the sort of like occupational hazards of LARPers, because you're always coming on these interesting weekends, is is you quit quickly start to sound like a Wheaton character, where if you want to, you can respond to any, you know, threat with a quick, quick, oh, a dragon, huh? Must be Tuesday. It's only the third one I've faced. And that can be kind of cool from time to time. It has a way of kind of sucking the air out of the drama, like out of the drama. Often, what we tell people to do is, like, even if you're not feeling afraid, if you feel like this is something that might make your character afraid, act afraid. A dragon! Holy oh, shit, I'm gonna fucking die! I'm gonna die burning! And, you know, if you do that, people around you will feel like it's okay to act afraid. They'll start acting afraid, uh, and then that panic contagion will spread, and you'll have the time of your life being terrified from someone else. Foam and rubber dragon. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do a few we images want to do just of the, the players at game while we're asking questions. Um, so yeah, does anyone yeah, have any questions? Please. How long does a character last? <laughs> that depends on the game. Um, many and games the have and the character. Okay. Yeah, it depends how much of a death wish you have. Um, <laughs> um, many games have. Like a sort of a holdover from again from tabletop, a resurrection mechanic, where you can die, but there's methods in game for you to come back to life. Um, we we don't that do that analogy. Tried that <laughs> yes, actually, our play ended up disastrous. <laughs> it ended up creating a zombie place. <laughs> well, the answer, like, it really depends on the game. Some games are more lethal than others, um, and it depends how smart you play. Um, you know, we have characters who've been playing our game, we've been running two years, we have characters who've been playing our game since the start, um, we have had characters that does occasionally happen who have died in their first game, um, which is very sad, but it happens and we try and make it fun for them. Um, it really depends on the game. Um, typically, I would say if you play smart, you can expect to have a nice, healthy, long lifespan with your character. Um, I would say most LARPers end up changing their character, before their character dies. So they'll retire a character because they feel like playing something new or trying something else before their character dies, but characters do die. It's a thing that happens. So anybody ever set up a character death because they want to switch characters? Absolutely. Yeah. Or just because they think it would be fun. I went into a LARP once where I'm like, hey, I've got this cool character, you kind of got this plot going on, and I went to an organizer and said, hey, can we put like a one-year expiry date on this character? Like, assuming nothing kills him before then, can I kind of like go down dramatically? in you know, the final moments of this game, and I'll make a new character. And he was like, absolutely, that'd be so cool. Like, yeah, we can totally what put that in. Um, we have a character in Elegy right now who's, who's done something similar, who's been like, yeah, no, my, my character's on a downward spiral, and um, I'm gonna make everyone cry when I go down. Um, so that's absolutely, that's absolutely a thing. Um, as you can guess from the name, death is kind of a big part of Elegy, so we have a bunch of things to kind of handle how you interact with death and how you do it and how you can make that moment when you die, because you will die, um, uh, entertaining. Um, if you want to know more about that and sort of how specifically we do it at Elegy, feel free to come by the booth and we'll, we'll talk about that some more. Um, uh, do we have more sort of like general questions about LARP, LARP in general? Yes? I have a bit more of a 
dismissive and like, you nerds, what are you doing out there in the field? Um, we have the advantage of the site we play on, we're quite isolated from the general populace. Oh. So we have the space to ourselves. Um, the site um, one actually caters to LARPs. So um, we have half the site all to ourselves. Uh, if there are campers on the other site, they're generally like, oh, what are you doing? I actually really want to play. So, <laughs> so yeah. Typically, a, a LARP organizer will try and pick a space where you have the space to yourself and don't have to deal with the general populace, um, unless you're doing weird European stuff like guerrilla LARP, where you are going out and LARPing in the public. But in that case, you're generally freaking out people um, who don't know what you're doing rather than freaking out you. I've played on sites where, for example, there's a public roadway like right next to the play area, and you'll have people drive by going, yeah! Like, honestly? And you just, you, you go, yep! Having the time of my life! <laughs> have fun at your wedding! Yeah. <laughs> um, We're having a blast! Uh, yeah, um, I honestly couldn't care. Yeah, I mean, less. when you it's, shoot in the car with your haircut. Yeah. It's just kind of something that, you know, as a society, it, it's that. Oh, it is. Same way you handle anyone who yeah. thinks something you think is cool yeah. is dismissive. Ukulele! Whatever! What a lame instrument. It's for you. I'm going to take it for you. Yes! Um, yeah, so it's just, it, you, you kind of brush it off. You know, let it roll up your back. It's, you know, people are going to think of what they want to think. If you're yeah. having an, an amazing time, you're having an amazing time. If you're talking about like your coworkers and so on, like you decided, hey, I'm going to come out and tell my coworkers I'm a LARPer, yeah. a lot of the time they will be like, what? Because they've seen the lightning the In lightning video. Theater, um, and, but often what will happen is when you start telling them about that, they'll be like, really? That I, sounds awesome. Yeah. And, or they'll be impressed. I know a lot of people that will tell them like, oh, this is what I do for LARPing and you know, and they're like, I could never do that. That sounds terrifying. Yeah. Like, I mean, you so impressed me. So it's becoming more and more kind of something you yeah, can just kind of shrug it. off, where it's like, oh, I learn. Oh, that's kind that's of like weird, cool. but whatever. It's like saying, oh, I collect stamps. It's like, oh, that's weird, but okay. I, just, I recently brought a friend to game who when I first told him <laughs> that I was LARPing, he's like, oh, that, that sounds cool, but it's really not for me. But I convinced him to come, and now he won't shut oh, yeah. up about yeah, that game. That, that is the one thing that we can say, is that people may say this now, if they come to their first game, we have not ever had a person not been like, oh my god, that was amazing. Oh, what is the next one? Like that kind of thing. So. And even if you don't like, like if you come to LG and are like, no, I, I really want to be an elf. That's cool. <laughs> because there's probably a LARP that is more sort of caters to me. Like if you come to LG, it's like, yeah, I, I, I want really more fighting. There are LARPs that you know are more fighting. If you yeah. come to LG, you're like, no, I want more drama. There's probably large that can cater that to you. I want more lightning bolts. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I'm sorry, but you'll have to go outside. Yeah. Uh, any other general questions? Yes. Uh, what were, this is a question to each of you, uh, what was your first experience with LARP? Uh, actually, Jamie and I met about how long ago? 10 years. 10, 11 years ago at LARP. Um, called Something Down. Which is known as Bo. Um, but that's, I've never role played before, no tabletop, no nothing. I've cosplayed before, but uh, not at all. And I went and, um, actually my first game, I just shadowed, which was, uh, I went out of game. I had a yellow headband on, which means you're not in game. And I just walked around seeing what people were doing, because I was like, I have no idea. I feel really uncomfortable. After that first experience, I was like, oh my god, why don't I have a costume? I need to play right now. Uh, the first time I ever learned, I had gone away like on a school trip for a week, and when I came back, um, this weird goth kid had sort of like attached himself to our group and was trying <laughs> to seduce my girlfriend. Um, and I was kind of suspicious of this, but then he started talking about this thing he did um, called Epoch, which still runs, it's the game I first started playing. And he's like, yeah, I know, it's like with swords and stuff, it's kind of like paintball, but fantasy. And I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, so, so it's like, it's like, the game that I've been dreaming of <laughs> since I was 12. Like where you can run around and like sort of do this dramatic kind of like fantasy thing in the woods and like people wear armor and stuff. And he's like, yes. And I'm like, stay here with Mandy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, I've been, yeah, I've been doing it ever, ever since. Um, <clears throat> uh, these people are eager for the room. So uh, we're gonna turn it back over to them. If you want, 
to hear more, if you want to hear more about LARP, if you want more No Shit There I Was stories, um, if you want to hear more about LG, we're out on the terrace. You can't miss us. We're the three oh, giant tents. Are out there. Um, come by, talk to us. We love talking to new people. If you want to have offer fighting as well, we yeah, have got lots of fighting. Yeah. We have a gun range, and we have an in character tent that we'll be out uh, yeah. in character in. It's all yours, guys. Come on in. <laughs>